to Baiju. This is your own channel 9th and 10th and all of you are achievers. In today's session, we'll be doing something really very interesting and we'll be learning that is really very important. In today's session, we'll be busting a myth and the myth that we'll be busting today is that blood is not regenerated in our body. Now that we are clear what we'll be doing in today's session, let's get started. We know that blood is really very important for all the living organisms. Especially when we talk about the humans, this plays a very important role in the transportation of nutrients, gases and the waste material. When we talk about the blood, it has two main components. Non-cellular component like plasma, right? And that makes about the 55% of the blood. Then we have the cellular components like RBCs, WBCs and platelets. RBCs makes about 45% of the blood and remaining was covered by the WBCs and the platelets. Now that we are clear about the components of the blood, let's understand their lifespan too. Yes, they also have a lifespan. When we talk about the plasma, right, they have a lifespan about 48 hours. So of course we will see that in 48 hours we will see that you know the plasma will be getting changed. Then when we talk about the WBCs and the platelets, the WBCs has about 12 days, 12 to 13 days of lifespan, whereas the platelets have a lifespan about 9 to 12 days. And then comes our RBCs. Now RBCs have the longest lifespan, that is about 120 days. Now that we are clear about the lifespan of these components that are present in the blood, let's understand whether they are getting regenerated or not. Here let's talk about the RBCs first. So we will be seeing the regeneration of the blood cells and we are talking about the RBCs first. Now RBCs will get regenerated in the bone marrow every 120 days. This is really very interesting, right? So every 120 days we will see that. Apart from that, we can say that two days it takes to get developed. So over here we know that the regeneration of RBCs is happening in the bone marrow. Now let's talk about the WBCs. Regeneration of these will happen about from 13 to 20 days, right? And this will be happening in the stem of the bone marrow. Now this is really very interesting. 80 to 90% of the WBCs will stay in the bone marrow and rest of course will be there and they will be helping in fighting, right? They are the ones which are called as soldiers of the body. So they help us in the protection. Then of course, let's talk about the platelets, right? Now platelets will get regenerated in every 10 days in the bone marrow. So we are clear with this, right? And we know that platelets plays a very important role in the clotting of the blood. Now that we can clearly say that that regeneration of the blood cells occur. Now let me ask you a very interesting question. The question that, why is it important for you to wait for three months in between the blood donation? I'm sure all of you must have seen, right? There are a lot of blood donation camp that we, that occurs, right? And why they will always ask you whether you have not donated or whether you donated the blood in a span of three months. And if you did, they will not be taking out the blood, right? That's really a very common thing that we all should be aware of. And why is that? Because this three month duration actually help in the proper regeneration of the blood cells, be it the RBCs, WBCs or the platelets. Now when we are doing the blood donation, right, what happens, the every part of the blood will be separating it out. So they say that when you are donating the blood, you're actually saving three different lives. So the different components of the blood can be donated to the different individuals. So this is really very interesting, right? So we are clear that why we should not be donating the blood after like, uh, you know, in between of three months if you did the donation at one part, right? You have to wait for three months for the next blood donation so that there's a proper regeneration of the cells that we have in the body. With this, we can say that we are clear that regeneration of blood occurs in our body and we are clear that blood is really very important. It has two important components. It has plasma, which of course plays a very important role. And then we have the cellular components like RBCs, WBCs and platelets. 
So we can easily recall that regeneration of blood cells happens in the body and we are now clear with the myth. I hope that you have enjoyed this session. Follow us for more for such amazing and interesting information.